Okay, so so let me start again. Um, uh, was uh, in the elevator. Peter was talking about uh, the, the fact that I will tell you about. Uh, I will tell, I will talk about the black hole, black hole solutions of in string theory and how these 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 these. Uh, the, the, I mean, learning about this I mean, involves also studying the geometry of Calabella manifolds and the moduli spaces and, and its and the arithmetic. Um, uh, so I will first give you a, a number of uh, an introduction to Calabella manifolds, which I am sure you're all experts, but I thought it would be good to set the, uh, to uh, put in somewhere the ideas, the main ideas I will need about them, about the, their geometry and the moduli spaces of it. Uh, then I will tell you about the, I will introduce the attractor mechanism. Uh, I will move on to discuss arithmetic of, the arithmetic of Calabria manifolds. I mean, I will, will relate this to the, the geometry and the arithmetic of these two. And then I will come back to the attractor mechanism and, and discuss the arithmetic properties of the attractor varieties. So let's start with uh, Calabria manifolds. So this is part one of this uh, talk. Right. So as you know, they are compact Taylor manifolds, so varieties with vanishing first turn class, and we are we are going to be uh, concerned precisely with 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 uh, the, the three dimensional case. Um, it is a theorem, about what I mean, as you know this, you can use this as a definition also, that these manifolds uh, uh, admit a unique up to a constant three zero form, which is holomorphic. Right. So what that means in terms of the cohomology of these manifolds, is the Hodge, the, 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 the Dobo cohomology of these manifolds, is that the dimension of H30 and H03 is always one. So that's one point, that's one important point that we will use uh, often. And the other one is the fact that Calabria manifolds have parameters, they come in families. And they have, because they are, they are complex and Kähler, and they have complex structure parameters and Kähler class parameters. We are mainly, uh, today we're going to be concerned mainly with the complex structure parameters. And this phi denotes that the, the, the fact that we are working in families. So the other object of interest, of interest in, this, in this talk is the periods uh, and the complex structure, right? Uh, so, um, so I am interested in the in the parameter space for the complex structure, and this I mean what what no what, what one can see is that the periods uh, describe the moduli space of the complex structure. So there is a canonical a canonical way to give coordinates on the space of complex structures, right? So, so this 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 holomorphic form, this holomorphic form as I said before, is defined up to a scale, but it's otherwise unique, right? It, it defines, therefore it defines a line in, in, the, in the third cohomology of the manifold. And uh, so what happens is that to study the variations of the complex structure, one can study how this, this, this holomorphic form varies in, within H3. And so, so once you, you, you have your, your, your line here, the coordinates of the line are precisely the, what, what, one, what one refers to as the periods. Are you taking integer question? Yes, yes, here, here this, this is, this is uh, integer, yes, and yeah. The domain yeah, okay, right. Right. I could take complex, but, but this can be defined over the integers, right? Oh. Sorry? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, who was asking? This was Nakajima. Yes. Yes, hello. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, um, so, 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 so let me be more specific about what we mean by the periods, right? So suppose you have, you choose a symplectic basis for your, for your, your, for your cohomology of three forms, alphas and betas. Right, symplectic just means that that the integral over the manifold of alpha beta is a from is a is, is one, and alpha and the integral of alpha with alpha and beta with beta is zero, and of course the integral of beta with alpha is minus one. 
So, and you, you can also, we can also consider the Poincare dual of these phases of A's and B's, right, in, in, in the, the, three, the third homology of the manifold. So, because once you choose a basis for the, your, your, your cohomology, you write down your periods as, as a linear combination of these phases with some coefficients, right? And the coefficients are the periods, right? As you, can, you, can take, you can take the integral of the home periods. And what one does is to think of the periods or half of them as homogeneous coordinates on the moduli space of the complex structure. The other half uh, is, 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 uh, is, uh, is they, are, they are derivatives of, a, of, a, of, a, of an object called the prepotential that, 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 that determines the, the, the special geometry of the moduli space. So, or because the prepotential, or you can say this in terms of the periods instead, and you can say equivalently that the periods determine this, this the geometry of the moduli space. So, so that's very good. So, so then what happens is that these periods are, is, are appear as, I mean, this is the geometry of the moduli space of Calabria manifolds, but as we, as we see, they appear in the arithmetic of the Calabria manifolds and they appear in the attractor mechanism, right? Because they, they, they have a, a, a lot to say about the physics of, of, of black hole solutions. So one can compute them, in fact, uh, as they sat, because they satisfy a, satisfy a differential equation called the picard fuchs equation. And there is an intuitive reason for this, right? Because if you start, if you start with, with, uh, with, um, with omega, right, and start taking variations with respect to the complex structure parameters, you start getting a series of closed D forms, of D closed forms, sorry, of, of D closed forms, yes. But of course, at most, B3 are linearly independent. B3 is the third Betty number, is the dimension of H3. So only uh, at most B3 of them can be linearly independent. So there must be a relation between them, between the first three of them the first P3 plus one of them, right? So, um, so that means that we have a system of linear differential equations of order B3, right? Uh, that is reflected in this equation here, where L is some differential operator acting on omega, it has to give you zero in, in, in cohomology. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to be uh, discussing uh, one parameter families of Calabria manifolds. So in that one parameter families, that means H21 is one. So when you have one complex structure parameter and because B3 is one plus H21 plus H12 plus one, then that means that B3 is four, right? So in that case, the degree of, of this operator is four. Right. Uh, so we have taken the periods over a fixed basis, right? Defined over the integers, right? So, so then when we, when we integrate the, the previous equation, we get a differential equation for the periods and this, this, is, this vanishes exactly. So this is the picard fuchs equation. They are nice equations. They have solutions around the, and the singularities that are serious, right? That, 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 that end, right? So they are bounded uh, from below here. Uh, so this means that they, 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 that you can only admit regular that they only admit regular singularities, and you can also have logarithmic solutions. Okay, so that I uh, will mention two examples in this talk. So the first one uh, is the quintic, uh, the, the quintic uh, threefold, right? Which is defined by what that, by by that we mean that that, that we have a quintic polynomial in P four. Uh, right, so and these x's here are, are, are homogeneous coordinates in P4. So this manifold has only one Keller class parameter descending from the Keller class of, of P4 and has 101 complex structure parameters. So, so one, I could write more terms here. But I am interested not actually in the quintic, I am interested in the mirror quintic, right? So the mirror quintic instead. Uh, which you can obtain, say, by taking a quotient over an appropriate group of automorphisms and then blowing up the singularities, gives you a manifold with only one complex structure parameter 
and, and 101 clay glass parameters, right? This mirror symmetry goes, uh, these numbers get interchanged as it should. Right? So this is one example that I'll mention. And another example, uh, the second example that will be very important for us today is the, the, uh, the example that uh, Varil first started working on and then Hulik and Varil wrote a, very nice, uh, a couple of very nice papers on this example. It's an example that is not is so easily described as the quintic, right? So, form, so, so one can describe it by taking two polynomials in a, in a, in a, in a, in a toric variety, but um, one can, one can uh, write a poly, uh, just one poly, one can, I mean, to give you an idea of what this is, I mean, I, I can actually write one polynomial uh, in, in, in P4 star meaning all, uh, uh, it's P4 where I take all the points where one of these sexes vanish. So in, that, in those neighborhoods, I can actually write a polynomial of this form that contains us here, some of the homogeneous coordinates of P4, and then the inverses, and this is a one parameter family. If, uh, actually not, not, not like this, but then you have, uh, if you take the quotient by a cyclic uh, symmetry that sends xi to so xi plus one, and a quotient that sends x to the inverse of x for each x, then you will find a space that has some, some singularities and you have to blow them up, but then you obtain a smooth Calabria manifold that has only one, para one complex structure parameter. Right, H11 is, 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 is not so large either, depending on whether you take only the quotient uh, with this group or both. But what matters for us is that these are, these, these are one parameter family of manifolds. Um, okay, so why this example? It will become clear later. So they have, as I said, I mean, this, this, in both cases, P3 is four, they satisfy a Picard-Fox equation of degree four, right? And this, where the coefficients here are polynomials in, in, in the parameter. Um, for the mirror quintic, it's a, it's, a, it's a case that's called a hypergeometric example that has the, the, the differential equation has three regular singularities at zero, infinity, and one fifth. So this case is the, the, a conical singularity, an ordinary double point. And uh, this is, I mean, as you know, it has a, a number of applications in, in string theory. Uh, uh, so, so this case is uh, the large complex structure limit uh, right, which is or a maximal a point of maximal unipotent monodromy, very important uh, also in, in, in physics. Um, and uh, is, the manifold is otherwise smooth, right? Except at this point and at this point, this point corresponds to the Fermat quintic, which is when the phi is zero. The other case, the Hule Canberra, is more complicated, uh, and that one has five singularities, right? Has three singularities of, of conical type. It has the large complex uh, structure limit too. And it has another horrible singularity that I don't want to talk about, okay? But it's otherwise smooth. And again, why this example? And, and, and we will see later why. Okay, any questions? Okay, so, so let me now explain the, the, the introduce the attractor mechanism. All right, so this started with Ferrara, Kalos, and Strominger in 95, and there, are, there were so many papers afterwards, right, that discussing this mechanism. So I'm going to consider solutions of type to be supergravity with a spherically symmetric black hole, VPS black hole, in four dimensions, and a Calabria of threefold in the extra six dimensions. It's a 10 dimensional theory. So, if uh, the four dimensional metric, well, it looks like, as I just said, it's a black hole metric, where this EU, uh, uh, where this uh, U is factor of, of E to the two U here, this is, uh, depends on R, where R, R is the radial coordinate uh, in, 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 in the four dimensional space time. And it's such that, that as R goes to infinity, your metric is asymptotically uh, flat, it's Minkowski space, so U tends to zero. And uh, the horizon of the black hole is, so the, cord, the radial coordinate is such that the, the, the horizon is at R equals to zero, and this is when, when, when U tends to minus infinity. 
the 10 dimensional space looks like a, like a, this, you have this four dimensional space time, which is a black hole, and at each point, you will have a Calabi-Yau. But the solution is such that, that, that this Calabi-Yau varies the complex structure of the, of the Calabi-Yau at each point and depends on the complex, on, on, on R, right? So as you move, as you vary uh, uh, on, uh, along this radial coordinate, the complex structure changes. Right. So, so, um, so we have a complex structure, some generic value of R, and a complex structure at the horizon, which I'm going to call phi star. Uh, so, so there's more about these, these solutions. Uh, the type 2b supergravity is, uh, is, uh, is gravity with, with, with extra, with, with U, U1 gauge, the number of U1 gauge fields. Uh, so the black hole is charged, has electric and magnetic charges that, that, that we call uh, Q and Ps, and these are all integers, right? So, so and this vector Q is, is a vector that, that is, a, is, a, is, is a vector that has V3 entries, right? So there are H to one plus one of each of these charges. Now I'm going to define a, a three form over the integers right, using, using, using uh, these, these, these integers here, I said, as, 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 as it would be a linear combination of, 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 of the symplectic bases for the, for the three, for the third cohomology that we had before. I'm going to call that gamma. And of course, this will have a Poincare duo, right, that we we'll call little gamma in, in, the, in the integer third cohomology. Now, there is more about these solutions, right? So, so, so this is where the attractor mechanism enters. Supersymmetry preserving black hole solutions satisfy what called precisely the attractor equations. So we have, we have this metric here, right? That contains this, this, this factor of U there. So, so these are the equations that you obtain when uh, 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 supersymmetry preserving solutions will give you these equations. That what are, so what are the ingredients? Are the U, right, is this factor in the metric. Rho here is one over R. Dz here is the central charge defined as, is proportional to, to, to a period, uh, the period of, the, of, this, of, of this cycle, right? Um, the period of omega over this, this integer cycle, Poincare dual to the charges, right? And then this e to the this factor here contains this k, which is the Kähler potential, right? So the the, the complex structure, the, the geometry of the complex structure, is uh, is also a, a complex space that is Kähler and it has therefore has a Kähler potential. The metric is defined through a Kähler potential, which is here. So, and um, so this object here is is related to the metric on the moduli space, complex structure moduli space. And the Keller potential is given by this integral that contains omega and its complex conjugate. So this is all, 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 all this comes from special geometry, right? So the geometry of, of the complex structure of Calabian manifolds, the complex structure spaces of Calabian manifolds. So those are the ingredients that enter into this attractor equation. So, uh, so, so what, what matters for us today is that this is a nonlinear dynamical system on the complex structure moduli space with flow parameter rho, right? So these equations will determine the, the variation of the complex structure of the Calabia with respect to, to the radial coordinate r. So I've copied here the equations. So the first one, I mean, if you rewrite it a little bit, you put this exponent to the other side, tells you that, that e to the minus u is mono, mon, monotonically increasing as r goes to infinity. But the second one, this is, this is an equation for z, it's a gradient flow equation for the central charge. So uh, what this is telling you is that the complex structure of parameters flow to an attractor point that I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to call phi star, which depends only on the charges of the black hole where, where z reaches a minimum, right? So, so we have a picture of this type, right? For the for the for the evolution of the complex structure uh, uh, to a fixed point, uh, phi star at the horizon, right? 
So as I said, I mean, this started with Ferrar and Kalosh, but the arithmetic associated to your tractor points, I mean, was discussed first, I think, by Greg Moore in 98. And this, this, this actually, uh, this, this, this paper is what has been inspiring the work I'm telling you about today. So a, a non-trivial exercise, well, the person, well, how expert you are in this, I mean, exercise is not obvious what I'm going to say, but it is an exercise in special geometry to, to show that at the attractor points, right, uh, that both phi and, and the variety at that point have special properties and, and the attractor equations become an equation that says that, that this vector of charges, right, that this is, is uh, that this three, three, integer three form, right, that contains the charges is in H30 plus H03. It lies here, right? So in other words, it doesn't have an H21 or an H12 part. So I said this, this uh, as I said, this, it, it is a straightforward exercise, but not trivial to see from the equations I had before. So what one can do now is to solve the attractor equations for charges, gamma, such that uh, phi star is an attractor point. But generically, what you find is that the gammas are not integral. So they must be integral, right? So the, 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 the hard part is to find solutions where gamma, so the gammas are, are integer value. So let's consider first the rank one attractors. So these are, so consider, consider H3, right? The circle homology or the, uh, and consider a space, I'm calling call V, as, which is a plane in H3 spanned over R now by the real part of omega and the imaginary part of omega in blue here. Of course, as you verify, this plane moves, right? Uh, as, 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 far, as far varies. On the other hand, Inside H3 of R, there is a lattice of charge vectors, right? So this, this lambda has, as we said, has values in the integers and it belongs to a fixed lattice. It's a fixed lattice, right? So a rank one attractor is an attractor where such that this gamma coincides with this plane, right? So it lies on this plane now. Okay. But now we could. Uh, so, so, so the, in this talk, I am interested uh, on rank two attractors. So, so, so this at a point of at a, at a point uh, where there is a rank two attractor, there are two. In their case, there are two gammas, such that the, you need to you need to find two gammas that satisfy the, the this equation, right? So, in other words, you have you have a plane. Uh, with the gamma one and gamma two, and you have a rank two attractor with, when this plane now coincides with this one, right? But this is very rare and very difficult. It's very difficult to have Calabria manifolds or varieties that have this rank two attractor point. So this, so this, this, so 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 this is where we where, where I'm going. I mean, and, and uh, what we want is to see to discuss the the these these attractor points. In, in, and how to find them uh, using a, an arithmetic strategy, for example. So as we will see, the mirror quintic is not, doesn't have rank two attractor points. Whereas the, the reason we are working with the holy Canberra manifold is that it has, it, it does have rank two attractor points. And this is the, this is what the, uh, we found in this paper by uh, with Candelas and, and Mohammed and, and Duco and Stratton. Okay, so now I want to move on to the arithmetic of Calabria manifolds, and then we will put all this information together. Can, can, are there any questions? Uh, maybe I have a question. Yeah. So among known uh, one parameter examples, how many of them have uh, rank two attractors? Ha, that's the that's the question. <laughs> this is in the I will tell you a bit. I mean, who was this Kentaro? Yeah. Who was, yes. Hello. hello. Yes. So yes. So this this is this is that the one of the main questions that we are. I will tell you a little bit at at the end. Ah. Uh, we don't know. The, the answer ah. is we don't know, right? And and how to find what makes a Calabria manifold 
to have attractor points, rank to attractor points, what properties does he have is a big question for us. It's one of the big questions, in fact. So you have put your finger precisely in what we are trying to understand. Okay, thank you. Okay. So now let's discuss the arithmetic of this. I mean, so this, this, I mean, this, I have dissipated these, these varieties have, uh, have nice arithmetic properties. So, so we are working with a family, in our case, we're a one parameter family of algebraic varieties, right? Um, given by some defining polynomial in an ambient space, right? So if you are a number theorist, what you, you ask questions in which phi takes values over the rational numbers, which I mean, if you are a physicist, that's of course a very strange question to ask. But if you're a mathematician, that's uh, the most natural question. That's <laughs> because you're a number theorist in particular. So, so these questions are the following. So, so how many solutions do you, does this polynomial have, this, the, this, this equation have p equals to zero uh, over, over q, right? That means where this, uh, the, the x's are, are over q. And if you can answer this question, can you answer how does this number vary with phi? And the point is that this is just too hard a question. And um, uh, it's very difficult to see, if you're a physicist, it's very difficult to see why, but I can perhaps mention that one of the millennium problems in, in, in mathematics has to do not with a threefold or with an elliptic curve, and has to do with the, it's a Bergstein and Dyer conjecture that, 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 is, that, 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 that gives you an asymptotic formula for, 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 these, for, these, for these numbers. And, and, uh, and this, this involves uh, really deep uh, uh, tools in, 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 in number theory and, 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 um, and, and geometry. So this is just too hard. I mean, uh, uh, so let's, let's, let's uh, try to simplify the problem, but as we will see, this actually pays off. So what makes sense is to reduce the problem mod p, where p is a prime number. Uh, in other words, what we're going to do, instead of working over the rationals, we're going to work over finite fields. So, that, so what's a finite field? A finite field is a field, just a, as the rational numbers are in the, in, uh, no, not in the, the rational numbers, the complex numbers and the reals, the, the integers are not fields, right? So, uh, but these are fields that, uh, that, are, that have a finite number of elements and they are all classified. I mean, they, are, they, are, they, they have P to the K elements where k is, is a positive integer and p, as I just said, is a prime. So we can still learn a, a lot from this. So the fundamental quantities uh, associated to, to counting points over finite fields is, is this number n, right? Which is the number of solutions, right? Precisely the counting of, of solutions of this equation over, over, over a finite field. And there is a famous function, right? The, that is the generating function for these numbers, which is called the, the zeta function, which is defined by this formula, right? That contains the numbers here. And this is a formal parameter t. And, and I don't say this uh, in the slides often, but this, this number depends on, the, on this prime, of course, uh, on the prime you have chosen, and it also depends on phi. I mean, it changes as you vary your, 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 your parameters. And why? Because the ingredients are your, your polynomials, right? You would have a number for each phi. Right. So the simplest possible case is, of course, it's not a calario, it's a point. I mean, if you want to consider this, 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 this setup, consider a point, right? Over a finite field, you always have one point. So you put one here in the, in the exponent of the zeta function. So you have one there. So this is the, the series for the log minus the logarithm of one over one minus t. So the zeta function is one minus t. That all looks boring and trivial. However, now what will interest us is assembling together the information that you get using the zeta function for its prime in what's called the, the L functions. It's what's called the L function. So for this case, it, what it means is that you take this, 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 this formula, this, this solution, this, 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 this expression, you evaluate T at P to the minus S and you take the product over all the primes. And that gives you this, this product trivially, 
And then Euler told us a long time ago that this product, it gives you the series. But that series is the, Z, is the Riemann zeta function. Like from, from something that looked rather boring and simple, you end up with something that has a, an enormous interest in, 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 in arithmetic and in number theory. So we're asking now similar questions for, for the threefold, right? So um, uh, what happened here? Um, so, uh, uh, yes, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Something happened with my slides. Okay, so the zeta function that I defined um, has a number of very nice properties that were discussed in last century. And they will label the Bell conjectures, which are not conjectures anymore, they are theorems. Um, uh, uh, so suppose you have an algebraic variety so the first conjecture says that this is that this zeta function is a rational function, right? So it's a quotient of two polynomials over the integers that, that are defined over the integers. Then it's proven by torque. There is a functional equation uh, that was proven by Grothendieck. This guy here is the older number. And there is a Riemann hypothesis that's proven by Deligne that says that the, the polynomials in the numerator and the denominator factorize further over the integers in polynomials of degree bi, where bi is the ith Betty number of, the, of your variety. And notice that in the numerator, you have the, 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 the you have polynomials of degrees bi where i is odd, and in the, in the denominator, you have polynomials of degree bi where i is even, right? So uh, these polynomials are all, they all have coefficients in z. And the, 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 the conjectures also have uh, statements about the roots of these polynomials uh, and so on. I mean, this one is, is valid even if you are the right variety of singularities, these two are not. You have to, to make changes. May I ask a question? Yes, of course. Yeah. Is there a reason why the polynomials are valued in Z, but not in Q? Uh, uh, it, the polynomials in? In the Deligne um, proof. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I don't know why they, I mean, why they end up being, uh, I mean, the, the, what the conjectures say is that these are, these are polynomials over the integers. I mean, hmm. uh, I, mean I, 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 I don't know, actually. <laughs> I never thought about that. Yeah. Uh, I have one Thank more you. question. I don't know if this is entirely related to what you might say, but is there some sort of, uh, because you already mentioned Greg's paper, is there some sort of automorphic form, I mean, uh, sorry, a modular form that is associated to rank two attractors? Yes, that's what we will see. Okay. That's, uh, that's precisely, I am gearing to that precisely. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, so in relation to the zeta function, I mean, I, I'm just trying to tell you a bit well, how difficult all these questions are, right, in a sense. So, uh, so suppose you take, instead of a threefold, you take an elliptic curve, right? So it's a Calabi of dimension one. You use your bell conjectures, your bell conjectures when, when, uh, when the elliptic curve is smooth, and, you, and then you write this down, and you find that there is only one of known, which is AP. But that AP is, is, the, is, is minus the number of points over the finite field FP. So if you count the number of points, then you, you have your zeta function, for example, right? But the point is that with this information, I mean, one can, one can uh, well, see, it's, 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 it's a strike. I mean, I can say that, that, that the elliptic, that this, the elliptic curves are associated to modular forms. And this is the, the Tanijama Shimura conjecture with proof given by Bass, Conrad, Diamond, and Taylor, uh, famously, right, and uh, in relation uh, in relation to the proof of the Fermat conjecture. So, um, so the if you consider, remember, I said we're also interested in the L function, right? So this is the zeta function for each prime p. I should have a prime p there, right? So now, if we assemble this together in an L function, right? So if we take the product of all the primes. We have to be very careful with the primes so called primes of bad reduction, which are with our singularities. But if you are careful with that, you end up with a series where, the, where with some coefficients here, an, that uh, for, the, for each number here, 
that are given in terms of the APs that you can write in terms of the APs for each prime. And what you find is that these, these, these coefficients are the F coefficients of a modular form of weight two of the congruence of group gamma zero uh, of N, where N is, 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 is a conductor. It's called the conductor and its prime factors are the these primes of part reduction. So all this is a very famous work in, in, in number theory. And of course, what people are working on now is to try to, to see what happens with, high, with varieties of higher dimension. Right, so for example, if you have a Calabria of threefold and you write, use the bell conjectures to write the zeta function, you end up with a zeta function for the smooth case that has this form, where R3 here has degree B3, and there should be an R1 there that has uh, degree one because B1 is zero, also B5 is zero. So, so you get a one here and a one there. So, so this one has, will have degree uh, H1, B2, which is H11, and this one will have degree B4, which is also H11. So what happens for the one parameter families that we're interested, right? So B3 is four, so this is a polynomial of degree four. And uh, due to the right conjectures again, uh, use, using all of them, the, it has to have this form. And there are only two unknowns, right? For the elliptic curve, there was one, and right now we have two, A and B. So A, just as, just as for the case of the elliptic, elliptic curve, A is minus N1, which is, this is the number of points over FP. And B here is related to, to, to the number of points over FP squared. So now you need to, to find these, these numbers. Okay, so, so I just copied this from the previous slide. So you have uh, A's and B's and these numbers. But one of the nice things is that these uh, A's and B's or equivalently these, these N's can be computed in terms of periods. And in fact, with some effort, you can write down explicit formulas in terms of, of some um, arithmetic version of the periods. But this is not the way we are going. Uh, this is very beautiful, right? Uh, but I'm not going to show you this. Uh, this is not what I want to show you, but I just want to make the statement that, 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 there are, that this, this can be written explicitly in terms of the periods of the Calabria. Okay, one more question. Yes. In, in the previous slide, when you wrote down the, uh, the polynomials, mm -hmm. um, the, here, I think all one? the coefficients, yeah, exactly, are three of the, I think all the coefficients now have to be um, integral. Yes. So should I just think of this as a uh, physicist proof of why the factorization polynomials also have to be valued over Z and not over Q? Sorry, uh, so, so in this case, uh, so, so you mean here? Mm -hmm. In this or in the previous, where is right. it? Oh, sorry, I lost the bad, the bad conjectures now. Um, it's here. So, so, so here you only have one, right? In the, in the Calabria case, okay, you only exactly. have one, one of these. Mm -hmm. And because, uh, and, and, oh, and, oh, oh, uh, okay, and because it's a rational function, right. then of course this has to be valued by the integers. Right, right. Okay. Okay. But, I, I mean, uh, anyway, so, um, so, so yes, so, so that's not the way I want to discuss this, uh, however beautiful that is. Instead, I'm going to tell you, uh, 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 I want to tell you something that's called the Frobenius that tells you, uh, gives us a better way of computing this. And you, I mean, we'll see why later, why we want to compute this anyway, right? So suppose you have an algebraic variety defined over FP, right? Over the finite field, I will do it just over the, is the simplest finite field uh, with some defining polynomial. Yeah, well, it is, it is a fact, this Fermat's little theorem, that if you take an integer, an exponent shaped like this, c to the p, this is equals to c mod p, right? There's an example here, and one can prove this uh, using induction. Uh, this also this also works for the for the other finite fields, right? The c to the p to the k is also c. And moreover, if you take two two elements in a finite field, you add them together and you take and you exponentiate shape to the to the prime p. You, that is that is that is congruent to c one 
to the P plus C2 to the P, which is kind of dice arithmetic, right? So now let's go back to those polynomials, right? So let's take a generic polynomial with coefficients and uh, in front of some monomials. Um, the coefficients, of course, are in FP and, and, and XI, uh, we have coefficients in FP, and of course, we allow the XI, the, 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 the solutions to be in, in, the, in a finite field. So then, of course, solving for P equals to zero is, gives you the same as solving from P uh, to P to the prime P equals to zero. And because of this property, that's the same as, as P uh, as, as, as the polynomial evaluated at X to the P, right? So, what that, so that means that X to the P satisfies the same equation as, as X. So this map, this map here, right? is called the Frobenius map and it is an automorphism, right? Uh, 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 in our case, it represents an automorphism whose fixed points are the rational points of FP, right? So fixed points are the, the points in which XP, X to the P equals X, right? So if we, these are, the, these are the, the, the precisely the points that you want to count, the rational points of FP, right? So I'm copying this statement here, right? Um, so, 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 so this is what's important, right? So fixed points um, are precisely the, 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 the rational points. Okay, well, so so what? I mean, so that's the, the, the what's the Frobenius the Frobenius map is telling is is, is useful for that in, in the following sense, is that uh, you can count the number of points using a periodic version of the Lefschetz fixed point theorem in topology. This is actually a very complicated issue, but uh, uh, at least it uh, gives you an intuitive idea on why periods appear, uh, or, or right. So, so if you count the number of, of, of points over FP, right, you, you can use this theorem and, and write it in terms of the trace of the action of the Frobenius on the homology, right? Apart from a factor of, of uh, minus one to the K, right? So, 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 the, so, so there's an, another way to see, as at least intuitively, that these countings have to do with 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 uh, with the cohomology with the homologies or the cohomologies, and in our case that will be given in terms of related to the periods. So let's go back to the zeta, to the zeta function, right? So we want to compute this, right? In, in particular, we want to compute the, the, the numerator, and what happens is that you can using using what I just said. Again, another non-trivial step, one can show that this is the, the, the determinant of one minus T times the inverse of the Frobenius as a map from H3 to H3, that this constructed from the periods. I mean, I can write explicitly this thing in terms of the periods. And the point of, of telling you this, as opposed to just giving you the formulas that I told you about before, is that this can be used to compute quickly this, 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 ah, this, these numbers. And uh, we posted in April together with Philip and Tukoman Strata a massive paper with, with uh, 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 all the, 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 an enormous amount of detail on, on, on how to do this. But um, that's, that will be the matter of another talk. But so let's just take the statement. So, so there is a way of computing this quickly. Um, uh, so that's what, what we did. So we took, um, uh, I mean, regardless of the plateau mechanism, you can use in this method, you can start con constructing zeta functions, which means that you can start constructing uh, uh, these numbers for your favorite algebraic variety, and then start asking questions about, about the nature of these numbers. Right? For us, they will be important. In, in, I mean, I'm gear, I'm, I'm going to tell you about the attractor mechanism in particular, but this, this, this has to do with also with the modularity of Calabria manifolds. So, of course, one has to assemble all the data together in L functions, as, as we said before, right? And, and uh, so, so we, we worked this out, I mean, a while ago uh, for the Miro Quintic uh, and tested some, some statements about modularity. Um, uh, which, which uh, uh, well, I might say something about this later, uh, but the, the thing is, what, the point I want to make is that this one can start 
uh, asking, uh, once you can, can compute these things, you can start asking a lot of questions about them. As for example, whether these are associated to some modularity. In the case of the conifold, I mean, the, 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 the R3, so the conifold is a singular point. R3 degenerates into a polynomial of degree three, right, with some coefficients, AP, that are also coefficients of a modular form, right? And this was known, in fact. So, so this, this is, in some sense, no surprise. So this is, this is what I'm saying, right? So this AP, is a is a is a p coefficient in the q expansion of the eigenform g found by Shen a while ago. It's a unique cos form, cos form of weight four of gamma zero twenty five, and this is the cos form if you want to see it. And the reason is modular. It boils down to the fact that this conifor points is in the in the in the in the boundary of the moduli space of a rigid Calabria manifold. And Gubea and Joy have proven modularity. Of rigid Calabria manifolds. Rigid here means that H21 is, is, is zero. So they have they have uh, the, the, the complex structure is rigid. So again, oh, okay, so I, this, I have time. I mean, uh, so for the modularity, I'll say something very quickly. Um, if you are interested in, 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 in studying modularity for the one parameter families, I mean, there are conjectures around. I mean, and the conjecture is such a mouthful. That, that perhaps you can just read it. I mean, this is something that would, would require another seminar to understand each word of what is being said here. So the, the conjectures are uh, in terms of modular forms, but of this is a higher type of modular forms. Um, so we did some numerical tests for this, for the functional equation associated to these modular forms, and they, work, they worked. Um, uh, providing some numerical evidence to this, but that doesn't prove anything yet. And in the, since then, there have been other tests, similar tests for other Calabria manifolds, and we are trying to say something about this in working programs with Philip and Duco. We will see whether we get anywhere. This is a very hard question. So what I'm just to summarize this, I mean, more generally, what are the properties of this function? I mean, and what about these properties and the modularity conjectures? And, and how do they vary with, with phi, right? So, so it's a big, big uh, question in, in number theory and in the Langlands problem in particular. So let's go back to the attractor mechanism now. So, um, so, so, so Kentaro was asking before, right? how do we find attractor varieties with right to attractor points? That's very hard, right? So, um, so in the rank two case, uh, right? So, so, so there's a first point, right? When 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 uh, you have a, a, a rank two attractor variety, something that is that 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 happens is that the whole structure of H three splits. That's again non-trivial, right? So it splits, and the Hodge conjecture uh, tells you that there must be a very deep uh, geometric reason for this. And again, this is how do, how do you find this? I mean, we, we don't even know for the Hulek and Barrel case that, 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 that I'm talking about, we don't, we don't know what, the, what that deep geometric reason is. We, can, we haven't been able to find, to find, even though find that, even though we speculated a little bit in our paper. But in turn, we assume, we assume that this is true, of course, right? So, so in, in, in turn, that splitting becomes apparent in the arithmetic structure of X, right? So what happens is that this R3 splits too, right? Because, because uh, the, 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 Hodge, the, the Hodge structure is splitting that induces a split. Remember, this is a map from H3 to H3. This split induces a kind of split in the Frobenius, it becomes, block, it becomes a block matrix. And that implies that, uh, that, that, that R3 splits into quadratics over the integers, again, with some coefficients here, alpha and beta, right? So factors over Z, uh, one factor associated to H30 plus H03, and the other factor associated to H12 plus H21. So, so I just repeated the splitting here, 
right? So, so this one is reminiscent of, 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 of the pieces that you get for an elliptic curve, right? And this one is reminiscent of what you get for a rigid Calabria manifold. But the fact is that they, they have their polynomials of degree two, and then there are these conjectures, the Ceres conjecture that, that says that this should be attached to specific, to specific, to, to modular forms of a specific weight and conductor. So the yeah, what's the arithmetic strategy then? Is, 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 is to, to, to search for varieties, right? And then make tables for each variety, make tables of R for many P's and Phi's and look for persistent factorizations, right? So factorizations that happen persistently in, over P and Phi, right? So look for, look for these factorizations, right? So this uh, was done in this paper. Well, this hasn't been published yet, but um, uh, so, so we describe this again, this, 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 this arithmetic strategy about persistent factorizations in this massive paper. I mean, it tells you about this with gory details, in fact. So, um, so let me give you a sample of these persistent factorizations. So let's take actually the one below. So this is the mirror quintic, right? So this line here is primes, right? And here is the number of factorizations, right? Uh, for each P, right? As phi varies over each uh, finite field, right? So here you see that for each prime, you get very, uh, for, for each prime, you, you get very few factorizations, no, no more than three. Whereas for, for the Hurek and Barrett, you get, you, get, you, you, can, you get many, right? So, 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 uh, so what we find is that for the Hulik and Barrel, and this was just a lucky, we were lucky in a way to find this, uh, that for the Hulik and Barrel manifold, there is always a factorization uh, when phi is, is minus one over seven, and when phi solves this quadratic equation, right? So phi is not necessarily even rational, right? It has this form. So if you look at uh, so you so what we found is persistent factorizations in this in this case, right? So for example, just as sampling again, I mean, what happens for p equals nineteen, right? You you look you 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 compute the zeta functions for each prime, right? For p, this is the example for p equals nineteen, right? So this example is the conical singularity that gives you a linear and a cubic there, right? and a quadratic. Sorry, so this whole thing is a cubic. Then you have these two splittings for phi plus and phi minus, right? So phi plus and phi minus are four and five in, for when p is 19. And when, when p is 19, phi equals to minus 177 is, is, um, uh, is eight, I'm sorry, it's this one. Yes, it's just, this is wrong, it's, it's eight. Uh, which is, is, is a smooth. Notice that this is an attractor point, I'm claiming it's an attractor point. But more, but this is smooth variety. It's not like the conifold, right? That is to have a factorization here, uh, uh, a factorization here due to the singularity. But here it's, it's a smooth variety. So something is happening in the geometry that, that gives you this, this factorization and, and therefore arithmetically, right? So these two are, are also conical singularities, right? So these factorizations are persist, I mean, for, 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 for higher and higher values. Of, of P, right? Whereas other factorizations like this one say, they don't, right? So there are this, this, for this case, you find uh, five factorizations, five uh, for five P's here, but, but uh, uh, so this one is not a persistent case. So, so, so this is a picture of the attractor flow, right? For, for the, for the Hulek and Barrel for phi equals to minus one seven. And this set of charges that is here, right? So very pretty uh, 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 flows that Mohammed, mainly Mohammed, uh, did, right? So, so these black points here are, this, are the conifer points. This is the large complex structure, and this is the the attractor point. So there are two two examples here, right? For another charge there, it's kind of very all very pretty. But you see, in these factorizations, there is more information, right? But uh, there is uh, the Serre conjecture related that generalizes the Shimura-Tanijama conjectures that says 
that motives, I mean, I won't get into what this means, but we have these, these factors of degree four, degree two, mo uh, the, the, uh, as must be modular. So, so as I just said, so this, 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 this alpha and beta must be modular. So we have these tables, I mean, for higher and higher values of P, right? And what you find, I mean, if you go to, to the L function and modular forms database, you find that for phi equals to minus one seven, these alphas and Qs are Fourier coefficients of modular forms of the congruent subgroup so gamma zero with congruent to 14. And the, there is one that is of weight two for the alphas. And for the betas, there's another one which is, has weight four. And you can find them in, in this database, right? And there is something similar happens when for phi plus or minus, Except that these are congruent subgroup of gamma. Uh, these are these are modular forms for the the, the, the the subgroup gamma one instead. And again, you find these these um, these functions in the database. And I just put here the the labels in the database. Right. So these are modular, right? So so in that sense, uh, they are modular. Um, uh, so you can, in fact, uh, associated to these modular forms, these f's one and two. You can write down L functions, um, and you, what you find, I mean, that also is that at phi star, the periods of omega are given by simple multiples of, of, of L values, right? So, which this was expected, or, uh, uh, so critical L values. So, this was expected from the Lynch, con the Lynch, the Lynch conjecture, and there's a very nice set of papers by. When Zhe Zhang uh, that, that discusses this, this precisely this, this, this point. Right, so there is a whole amount of arithmetic that is coming out of these of this, uh, attractor points, right? You can also use an attractor mechanism. I mean, you have a black hole, you can compute the area of the horizon, right? So then you can set up your, your charges, right? So decay and LR integers, kappa here, they can be one or two. And if this V star is the ratio of these critical L values, what you find is that the area is given by a, by a formula that involves this critical uh, uh, values of the L function. And of course, that is, that is proportional to the black hole entropy. Right. So, so this is um, basically what I wanted to say today about the arithmetic of black holes. I mean, now I just want to conclude, but are there any questions? No? Okay, so, 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 so in, in summary, so what, so what have I said? I mean, we, I have said that some Calabria manifolds admit uh, points in moduli space, which are attractor varieties, right? How, how, how what makes a Calabial manifold be an attractor variety? It, we don't know. Why is the Hulik and Beryl example that, that we talked, that I just talked about so special, right? It, it's, it's, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know the answer to that. And uh, so far we have done some searches and, and it's, 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 as you can imagine, it's very difficult to find uh, more examples. Um, the other groups have had no more examples, but I mean, they haven't published this yet. So, so uh, as I just said, the Hodge conjecture, as I said before, means that there must be a very nice geometrical reason for the splitting of the Hodge structure, right? And that, and therefore the splitting of the zeta function and all these uh, nice modularity properties of the attractor mechanism, right? Of the attractor, of the attractor varieties, really. I mentioned, I mean, this bigger question, right? That that that, that we want to understand, we want to 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 work on modularity of Calabria varieties, but if you are a string theory, you want to, I mean, this is, a, this is very nice work, very interesting work per se in mathematics, but what, how, does, how does that affect the physics, right? So for example, I said that for conical singularities, there are modular forms. 
what does that mean for the physics of, of uh, for string theory at conical singularities? I have no idea. I mean, that, that, which is amazing. We know quite a lot about, uh, uh, there are many, many papers on, on, on conical, on, on, on Calabria manifolds. We have conical singularities and many statements about what happens to conical singularities. But, and, and they are modular in some sense, and I don't know what this modularity means in physics. Maybe it doesn't mean anything, but it is a good, perhaps might be interesting to understand. There is the work, the recent work, for example, by Kashu, Nali, and, and Yang, which I, I suppose he talked, I haven't seen his talk, but I suppose he talked about it earlier today. And there, I mean, there are many, many, there are, there are many people, as you can imagine, mathematics and physics working on, on these, and people who are working in the Langlands program in particular. And then there is also a question about mirror symmetry. I mean, going beyond the attractor mechanism. I mean, you, if I give you a Calabria, yeah, uh, you write down and compute the zeta function using whatever method you like, you compute its L function. And what's the relation between that and the L function of its mirror? And that is again a hard question because the, the zeta function, as you, you could see, has, doesn't seem to have any information about the Keller class parameters. It knows how many there are. It knows about the second Betty number, right? But it doesn't know about the, 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 the any, any, it doesn't have any of the structure of the Keller, of the Keller class that we know from mirror symmetry, for example. And the reason for that is because the ingredient is just a polynomial, right? It's just algebraic. The, the, the ingredients that you that enter into the zeta function are just that, uh, are given uh, is, is, is are just polynomials. So, so just you are just giving information about the complex structure of the manifold in some sense. So, however, the 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 so the Keller class parameters are not algebraic, right? In given Calabria manifolds, so, so they don't you don't seem to be able to see them. However, they are algebraic in the mirror, right? So, so the idea that uh, we have had with Philip, and then we thought about this a little bit with Fernando a while ago, is to actually think of some try to think of some uh, version, quantum version of the zeta function that will include this information. Right, but we need but we need to to think better about the mirror map and, and what it means in terms of L functions. There is also in, in terms of the mirror symmetry, there are also, I mean that the attractor points. I mean, if you write the mirror map, so that phi equals to minus seven, I just said, I mean the periods are given in terms of values of the L function. So therefore the mirror map is just a rational function of the periods, right? So is also given in terms of, of values of the L function, right? So this, so, 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 so it would be very interesting to understand this in the light of mirror symmetry or to think about this in terms of mirror symmetry too. Um, so finally, uh, there is a question now about, I told you about the, uh, the, the area of the black hole, right? So, so now you, you, this, you're begging, I mean, I will compute the count microstates, compute the black hole, eh, eh, the black hole. Entropy. I mean, not just the area of the horizon. I mean, following the work of Strominger, Bafa, Maldacen, a lot of people, right? Um, for example, we could use the Hudek and Berlin and Spiro. And in fact, there is a, um, a paper that uh, with that by Philip and, and, and Perry Cusella and, jo and Joseph McGovern that appeared in April, right? In which they solved, the, they, they gave solutions of the attractor equations around the large complex structure limit following this, this work, but including all the instanton corrections in the prepotential, right? So that was, that was a feat, rather beautiful work, I think. And now we're trying to extend this uh, 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 in ways that, I mean, that are in, in, in progress I mean, with, with particularly these, these students. So, um, so I think that's all I have to say. And, and thank you for your patience. I see I have gone a, a few minutes over time. So thank you for your patience. And uh, um, I mean, if you have any questions. Okay, let us thanks Miguel. Thank you. So my session is open for questions. Okay, I have one question. So 
Here, I think you are talking about the uh, attractor equations for, in four dimensions, I think. Um, yeah, attractor equations for what, sorry? I in, missed. In four dimensions. Uh, uh, sorry, in, in four yeah. space-time dimensions, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four space-time dimensions, right? So. Ah, uh, yes, it's a, it's a four-dimensional yeah. black hole. That's yes, right. and six-dimensional Calabria, right? Yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, but the attractor equation itself exists in five, five dimensions. Uh-huh. When you start with the M theory on Carabia, for example. Yes, exactly. Yes. Things are real, but so in, can you do a similar analysis in that? Yes. Set? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Ah. Yes, of course. I mean, you can relate these and, and yeah, with mirror symmetry, you can relate it to type two A precisely. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, uh -huh. for example, if you go to five dimensions, you can also include uh, Chan Simon's term, for example. So. Ah, oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, for example. Uh -huh. Happens, etc. And I, I have no idea if it has any number theory. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. But this, it is a, it is a, a lovely question, actually. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't. I, I have no idea how the term Simon's. Uh... Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's a good, very good question. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? So may I ask at the rank two attractor point? So this means that H30 plus H03 has two integral vectors. Yes, exactly. And it sounds like you are saying also that H12 and H21 also has two integral vectors. Is it correct? The, the, the other part, yes. Yes. Oh, is that so? So it splits over the integers, uh -huh. right? So that, that's the, that's the that's, that's the thing, right? Uh -huh. that, that 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 yes, you have this 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 incredible split over the integers. In fact, yes. I see. I was chairing the morning session uh, talk by Nali. Ah, uh, yes. And he was focused on the that part, integral existence of integral vectors in H one two and H two one. Ah, uh, yes. So this is related not to the black hole, but to the Flux compactification. Yes, exactly. So there are uh -huh. two different problems solved at the same time. That's mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah, I, uh -huh. I, I think so. I mean, that, that's uh, sorry. I don't. I, did I interrupt? No, 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 no. Oh, uh, 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 yes. I mean, so I, I think this is this is actually extremely interesting. I mean, that there, that this that these two things, yeah, have as you say. I mean, they are solved uh, simultaneously somehow. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and, and th this might happen more and more the more we learn, right? In in, in about about these 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 points. Right? So, uh, in general, about about you know, uh, the more we try to learn about modularity and in this string theory, uh, either the attractor mechanism or as, you know in these flux compactifications is proving to be rather rather helpful. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the, in the appearance of the zeta function in, in the part where you introduce the periods, um, and you said it was quite remarkable that the zeta function appears from there. Um, what exactly does the zeta function do for the Calabiao? And could you flip the question back on its head? What can the Calabiao do for the zeta function? Yes. So, so a Calabrias, you know, is a manifold with a, it's an algebraic variety, it's a complex numbers. I mean, if you are a physicist, probably you will never care about the zeta function, right? In some ways. So the zeta function exhibits a finer structure of the Calabria manifold, right? When you think about the 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 the, the Calabria over finite fields, it's, it's exhibiting this finer 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 structure over these discountings. But then in the end, what you learn is that if you start counting points over finite fields, what you end up is, 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 is through the provenience of, of whatever method you like, connecting this with the periods, right? And the periods are something that if you are a physicist or a, or a geometer, is something that you, 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 you know about. Uh, um, I mean, they determine quite a bit of the physics of, of type two compactifications of Calabria manifolds. And they also determined, as I said, I mean, the, the modular space of, of your Calabria was a complex manifold. So these this are all intertwined in a, in a very deep way, which in some sense, it was there in the proof of the Deming conjectures. I mean, that uses this, this, this Eladic version of the, of, the, 
of the fixed point theorem, in fact, right? That mean, relates the countings with, with, the, with the cohomologies and, uh, homo uh, uh, and therefore the geometry of the manifold. By the Lynch conjectures, do you mean the Lynch proof of these conjectures or? Yes, the Lynch mm. proofs of the, of the, of the Pyotel conjectures, yes. Um, uh, just one more question. Um, the, the, is there like a generating function for, or can one try to think of a function analogous to what I think Shamit had done a while ago, where you try to compute the black hole degeneracies at the special attractor points in terms of Hurwitz class numbers? Is in there terms of? In terms of Hurwitz class numbers. Ah, uh, yes. Is there something analogous that you could do over here? Or have you thought about that? Uh, you mean, uh, actually, could you repeat the question? I'm not sure I, I got the question. Sorry, um, maybe, can, can you hear me now better? Yes, I can hear you better. Um, so for the case of the K3 cross T2, um, I think for the attractor points, there's a special counting function which counts the number of black hole solutions yes. at these special attractor points, and they are sort of intricately mm -hmm. related to Hurwitz class numbers, the generating function for Hurwitz class numbers. Indeed, yes. Is there something analogous that one could ask for here? Um, I mean, the, in, in a way, all I can tell you that we are trying to find what that might be, right? I, I don't know. Um, mm. uh, really, all I can tell you, I basically have to tell you what I know, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I'm not sure what else to add to this uh, in terms of, I mean, if, if you want to count microstates, for example, what you do is your computation, you compute this elliptic genus. Right. right and 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 then you get a sense of what it is that you're counting and 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 from that perspective i think we will get somewhere but um i don't i wouldn't know how else to try to answer your question right but this is i mean this is this is not how this hasn't been answered right okay yeah mm -hmm. and uh, finally like do you expect something interesting to do happen for self miracle of house or something boring to happen for them i mean the air I functions <laughs> Would probably map onto themselves. So yes, the uh, yes, theory, there's yes. something interesting going on there. Absolutely, yes. But I mean, that, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't worked out any of any example that is self mirror. Right. right. Okay. So um. So, but it might be an interesting point to think about, right? Because uh, um. Well, but because of what I was saying before, well, mirror symmetry, right? And this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, very good. Any other question? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you.